Hey everybody, it's George Whittem reporting for Whittem's World. Sorry about the week off last week. I was on the road and just tied up, and this week I'm playing catch up. So I have been kind of running ragged, but I promised to squeeze one out to this week, and we're doing it. So here we go. Bear with me. This is going to be another raw one, warts and all. Okay, this one came in from this question came in from Tim Gelson. And this is one I've been wanting to answer for quite a while. And just tonight, I'm just going to go for it, okay? The question, he said, as long as I've been in the VO business, I've used a Mac with Pro Tools software. I'm looking ahead to my next computer purchase. I'm sure that I'll stay with a Mac, but I'm seriously considering a move to Twisted Wave. I'm just looking for more simplicity. Am I headed in the right direction? Is it possible for you to compare the two? Let's keep this in context. Pro Tools is a powerful tool for production and post-production. That means after the recording and you need to produce something and do a mix, Pro Tools is killer. Twisted Wave is a powerful tool for production of a mono or stereo audio track. It's a specific tool to do a specific job, and it does it really well. So one way I can compare the two is to show you how long it takes for one app to launch and start a recording of a new project versus the other. Now, to be fair, I'm going to start Pro Tools right off the dock. My machine is pretty fast. I'm using an SSD, so it should launch pretty quickly. I'm running Pro Tools 12.2.1, the most up-to-date version of Pro Tools, and I'm running uh, Twisted Wave 11.4.4, I believe, or 3, the most up-to-date version of Twisted Wave. So I want this to be as, uh, a pretty com- com- blah, blah, fair comparison. The only thing else running on the machine is Chrome and, of course, ScreenFlow, which I'm using to record the demonstration. So first, let's start by recording a voice track in Pro Tools. This is assuming you have no templates or anything. Of course, you can speed this up with templates in Pro Tools, but let's watch. So we launched Pro Tools. And I launched it a minute ago just to make sure it could it would launch as quickly as possible. Okay. So it's loading all of the plugins. And we are at the startup screen. So we'll go ahead and create a new project. We'll call this VO test one. And file type broadcast wave, regular wave is fine. Bit depth 24 is fine. 441. All those settings look good. And we'll click create. Now it's going to ask me to, again, give the session a name and tell it where to go. So for this test, I'll just put it on the desktop. Okay, now we have a new folder on the desktop. That launches Pro Tools, and now we're actually ready to create a track to record in. So I'll go to Track, New, make an audio track, Mono, Create. Okay, make that a little bit bigger, easier to read. Okay, and we'll make sure our inputs are configured. In interface input one, that should be right for my rig. Mbox two, output. That's not the hardware I'm using, so let me just go to setup, playback engine. Make sure it's set to my Onyx console. It is, so that looks correct. Let's go to I.O. Make sure that input is set correctly. Yes, one is mapped to one, and output, output one and two is stereo mapped to the um, Onyx. Okay, we're almost ready to record and roll. So we'll hit record arm on the track. There it is, the track is armed, but I'm hearing an echo in my headphones, so I'm gonna mute the record track. I don't wanna hear myself. I don't wanna hear a second version when I'm already hearing myself off my mixer or my inbox. So I'm gonna mute the record track, turn down my speakers so there's no feedback. Then I'm going to hit record button with the mouse then the play button with the mouse. I could also use the three key on the keyboard. Now we're rolling in Pro Tools. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There you go. So we're now that's how long it takes to get up and running and recording with Pro Tools. Okay. Let's compare Twisted Wave. Now I'm going to leave Pro Tools open. Let's launch Twisted Wave. And let's hit record. Oh, there's an update available. We'll go ahead and do that later. Just remind me later. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, we are already recording in Pro in Twisted Wave. Yeah, that's how fast it is. Okay, admittedly, I did not go through the menu and double check my settings. So let's just double check. Audio input is system setting. Hmm, let's put it on Onyx because that's my microphone input. 
audio output is also probably system setting. Let's just make sure it's using the right thing and plug that into the Onyx for playback. And oh, there's an update available. We'll go ahead and do that later. Just remind me later. And now we have playback. So as you can see, getting up to the point of recording in Twisted Wave is way faster, way, way, way faster, okay? Now, here's where things get very diff. Well, okay, things are already pretty different, okay? But another way that the softwares are very different is in Twisted Wave, this is a what we call a destructive editor. What you see on the screen is what is there. If it's not there, it's not there, okay? There are no backup files or anything unless you physically save them. So with Twisted Wave, if it's there, it's there, okay? Pro Tools is different. With Pro Tools, you create what are called clips. Clips are these files that are written in the hard drive that are written every time you start and stop recording. So I record a bit of an audio track, hit stop, another clip is created. Keep going, another clip is created over and over and over. With Twisted Wave, it's just one file, no matter what, how many times I start and stop. Record. I'm inserting audio into the session right now because I put the play cursor right in the middle and hit record. Stop. Let's record some here. Recording. Stop. Okay. But this session is still in a sort of virtual or scratch disk temporary state because it is untitled. Okay. So if Twisted Wave crashed right now, fortunately it recovers the session almost every single time but you really don't have a saved version of the session until you actually command S and give the session a name and save it. We'll just put it on the desktop, TW test. Okay, now we have an AIF file, same as a WAV file, saved and that session can be reopened or that file I should say can be reopened and worked on. But everything you do is happening to this one file. In Pro Tools, Everything you do is happening to a Pro Tools session or PTF or PTFX. PF, PT, oh, sorry, forget it. Um, it's happening to your, your session file. The audio on the hard drive is totally unchanged. So no matter how many edits you make, and by the way, if you want to zoom in in Pro Tools, it's got to hold down Command. Oh, actually, it's not Command. It's Alt and then Two Fingers Scroll. On Twisted Wave, you just two-finger scroll. You know, <laughs> seems logical. Um, so anyway, in, in Pro Tools, um, if we make edits to the audio, let's say we take this piece of audio here and delete it, you'll see now it creates two new audio regions from that split file, okay? The files that are in bold are physically hard drive files that are on the hard drive. The files that are not bold are temporary files that are being created but will not do not actually exist on the disk until you export them. If I'm wrong about that, write me in. I could be wrong, but I think that's how it works. So anyway, the more you edit, the more files and clips are created. So that fills up the hard drive quickly with lots of clips. That's the downside. The upside is you have copies of every step of the way, of every single edit. Everything you do is being stored and saved so you can go back and retrieve something later. But that clogs up your session, that clogs up your hard drive, that generates many, many, many files, and it can get clunky, okay? So one thing to remind yourself about Pro Tools is while it has a built-in file management tool in the clips window, as that clips window begins to fill up, it starts to put more and more drag on the system, it uses more and more memory, and Pro Tools can start to get a little bit sluggish. At least it used to do that. I mean, now with Pro Tools 12 running at 64-bit, Maybe that's not as much of a problem, but classically that was definitely a huge issue. So why would you have a lot of clips in Pro Tools? Well, you saw how long it took to open Pro Tools, create a session, set up the tracks, set up all your settings and get it up and running, right? A lot of, a lot of steps. So what a lot of people do with Pro Tools is they just launch the same session over and over and over. And each time they're done editing and, and working on their audio, they go ahead, clear out what's in the edit window, just delete it and then they start recording a new project. So all the clips remain in the clips window. So again, those files aren't in the edit window, they're not in the mix, but they are addressed by the project and they are taking up space on the drive and they are dragging down the session. So if you do this method, some people do a new session every month, some people longer, it starts to drag down Pro Tools, okay? So let's look at another thing. This has gotten a lot better in Pro Tools lately, by the way, but let's say we wanna take this session now and we wanna save it out as an MP3. 
So we want to take all this audio. Now, it used to be with Pro Tools, this is what they fixed. That's really important. It used to be that if you wanted to export this audio, you had to wait in real time. So if it was a 10-minute long file, guess what? 10 minutes. But now there's an offline bounce mode. So that will it'll export the file as quickly as possible. But one thing that's really annoying is Pro Tools assumes you're doing music and wants to bounce everything in stereo. So you have to remember to go to Bounce Source Output and set Mbox Output Left as the source. Now that will force it to make a mono file. Cool thing in Pro Tools 12, you can save it as a WAV and an MP3. You can do both at the same time, which is kind of actually pretty cool maybe in some cases. Saves one step maybe for an audiobook producer. Um, but I'm going to save as an MP3. I'm going to choose uh, the desktop location where I want the file to go. And I'm going to click Bounce. Now it brings up another window. This is where you enter all of the MP3 metadata, which you almost never need for voiceover. And we want to make sure the encoding speed is on slowest, which thankfully now it will actually remember the setting. It didn't used to do this. And our proper bit rate for an audiobook, for example, is 192. Now we're able to save an MP3. Okay. Not too bad, but, you know, a number of steps. Twisted Wave, if I want this to be saved as an MP3, I hit Command-Shift-S. I choose File Format MP3. And let's give it another name because this is Twisted Wave. And then I click Save. Okay, so a lot less steps to go through. Okay, okay, yeah, I forgot to look and make sure the MP3 settings were correct. Sorry about that. Settings encoding zero best, which is be the equivalent of slowest on Pro Tools, I guess, and bit rate 192. Joint stereo is the default, which is fine. But it will just save it as an MP3 in mono. You don't have to remember to set the output to a left channel mono source. It's what you see is what you get. If you see mono here, when you save it out, it's mono on the, on the output file. So those are just a few of the ways that Pro Tools are very different uh, or is very different from Twisted Wave. Twisted Wave really simplifies the editing process. There's only one selector tool. All it can do is select stuff, okay? So if I want to delete something, I hit delete. But in Pro Tools, you've got all these different tools. Now, if you have it in smart tool mode, some people are real power users. They get used to being able to do things like fades. They like the boundary editing or trim tool to be able to trim the edge of a boundary clip, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, if you're really good at those tools, it could save you a little bit of time. But in Pro Tools, if you want to move things around in time, there is slip mode and there is shuffle mode. In shuffle, everything's locked in time. You can't move it. In Twisted Wave, there is no twist, there is no shuffle and slip. It's pretty much shuffle all the time. Okay. So it's one less thing to think about and screw around with and change. So if I want to delete something in time, if I highlight it and hit delete, it deletes it in time. And now the time is reduced. If I don't want to reduce that time, well, yeah, there's no slip anymore. What do I do? Hit S for silence. And now that time is filled with silence. Okay. So it's not that big a deal. Here's one thing. Here's a little trick I'm going to leave you with before I go. And this is something that's really killer in Twisted Wave. And that is the ability to take room tone and paste it in wherever you need it and have that room tone match the length of the selection that you're pasting. So let's get some room tone. About five seconds of room tone. Let's copy that room tone. And let's say this is a mouth smack and a big breath that I don't want anymore, okay? Well, I've selected that bit of audio. Now, the room tone was five seconds. The selection here is two and a half. If I was to paste it, it would paste twice as much room tone as I need. Then I have to go in and I have to, you know, trim it down and shorten the room tone, okay? I have a really cool feature in Twisted Wave that if you know the answer to an equivalent in Pro Tools, I want to hear it. Put it in the comments below. But this is called Special Paste. If I set special paste up this way, like you see, it replaces on, attenuation all the way down, no fades. Now when I hit Command Y, boom, room tone replaces the sound. Say I want to replace this sound right here with room tone. Boom, room tone. So instead of using silence and removing the room tone, I can now replace anything that I want with room tone with a one-click action. So that is something that's really, really big that I think is a huge huge plus about 
uh, Team Viewer. Did I see Team Viewer? Yeah, anybody that knows me knows I get Team Viewer and Twisted Wave mixed up all the time because I use them both all the time. But anyway, there's just a few things. I could go on and on. Twisted Wave is a mono, mono or stereo editor. Pro Tools is a multi-track production powerhouse. Twisted Wave uses a, uh, Apple Audio Units plugins. Pro Tools uses another standard that they've developed. Pro Tools runs on Windows and Mac. Twisted Wave is only on Mac. There's a million ways that they're different, but I thought I'd, maybe I would show you the ones that I feel are the most relevant to most voice actors and what would help you kind of decide. The sound quality at the end of the day, no different. If you choose 16-bit 44.1 on one program, choose the same setting on the other program, and export both files to a WAV, they're going to sound exactly the same. It's really not, not an issue. It's just a matter of what tool works for you and does the job you need. And if all you're doing is voice acting and you want something that's lightweight, fast, simple, nimble, can handle a Mac OS update without getting hosed, can run on an iPhone. This program is still my favorite after five years now of using Twisted Wave. Anyway, gosh, I feel like I've been rambling my mouth a mile a minute, but I want to squeeze a lot into this short show that I do every week. If you have an idea for a future Widom's World, send it into Widom's World at edgestudio.com. That could be a tutorial. That could be a tech tip. That could be something you want to hear reviewed, whatever. If you want to get tech support and you need one-on-one -on -one support on on demand or something like that, then you want to go to vostudiotech.com. You can open a support ticket or you can schedule a call with me or one of my techs. And if you just need tech support or you just need general uh, customer service at Edge, that's 212-868-EDGE. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next week on Woodham's World. Send in your ideas. I love to hear them. Till next time.